What's up, Star Wars fans? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another episode of Star Wars Go Figure. Today is Saturday, the 27th of April, 2019. Uh, joined with my buddy Lockie. He's come up again. We're going to have a bit of a breakdown of Star Wars Celebration and everything that's come out of it. So, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Um, excited to have you back in Australia. And it's good to be back. <laughs> good to be back. Um, yeah, excited to talk all things celebration your trip to chicago and la and everything so. it was a whirlwind and yeah definitely exhausted still from it it's still you hasn't settled and then we come home to avengers and <laughs> it just hasn't stopped you've, um, you've come home to tears a barge and more tears absolutely <laughs> and uh the wife might be dropping in at some point too she's due home from work any minute so she might drop in and have a bit of a chat with us as well um so where should we start celebration um you know was, chicago was the coldest place i've ever been to in my life and i live in a little town called mount barker in adelaide here in south australia it is a cold little crap town and yeah chicago is just i saw snow for the first time which was incredible and you got to be on hoth oh it was nuts my tauntaun didn't even make, make it close to the first marker it, at what, po- at what point did you gut him open and sleep inside the door? Oh, I, sh- I should have cut him open before we <laughs> even left the, left the hotel. It was that cold one. There was one day it was just snowed all day long. I've never experienced cold like that before. So what was it? Was it minus temperatures or was it... In Fahrenheit, I think it was. No, it wasn't. No, I think there was one day where it was like one degree Celsius. That's enough. Yeah, That's which, is, enough. which is cold enough. Um but mostly it was sort of most days were sort of reasonably nice and bright and sunny but there was there was one day where it was just snowing all day long it was light snow um it wasn't wasn't overly heavy but it was sat there for a couple of days afterwards if you sit in it long enough it'll drench you won't it yeah yeah, yeah. and i was wearing like just crappy converse shoes and <laughs> i was glad we just had spent most of the time getting ubers and stuff to get down to the convention center so it worked out all right but um yeah, I don't, I don't know. How, how was CouchCon for you at home? Uh, very tiresome. Um, waking up at... I, I tried strategically not to stay up until the panels started. Yeah. I would go to bed and wake up at quarter past one in the morning. And That's dedication, the, man. And the live streams would start around one thirty. Um, and then I sat there in my Jedi robes giggling like a schoolgirl at literally everything <laughs> <laughs> and trying not to wake my missus up who was fast asleep but um i still reckon i managed to get a reaction out of her mm, that's awesome oh, it was definitely a weekend for just smiling like about everything star wars like just the vibe of celebration too especially with like the way Star Wars fandoms come across the last 12, 18 months, um, it was great to just see so much positivity just everywhere, everywhere it went. There it, was one negative experience I had with with a person, um, and that wasn't even a big deal. I just sort of you brush it off, brushed off, and walked off. So um, that's not too bad out of five days of a con yeah. to have. Like you can go to Adelaide Comic Con or Supernova and have a run in with somebody. So to have five days of it and only have one run in, that's yeah. pretty good. It wasn't even a bad one. I spotted this dude who was wearing a shirt and it was basically like a bright Star Wars logo, like the Solo logo, but it yeah. said Ryan Johnson. And I said, oh, Ryan Johnson, awesome. Oh, cool shirt, man. And he's going, oh, thanks. He goes, I'll sort of, he goes, I'll wear my opinions on my shirt. And I didn't realize until afterwards I had a closer look and he had fire written at the top. So I said, fire Ryan Johnson. I said, oh, okay, I've changed my mind. I don't, I don't, I don't respect that T-shirt anymore. Yeah, it's he, a bit harsh. And, and he's just, oh, come on, man. Like, you know, it was crap. And he's like, no, it wasn't. Like, you know, each to their own, but... That's I, why I we all... Like, okay, all right, I'm going to move along. That's why we all have opinions. And... Yeah, which which is fine, you know. If he doesn't like it, that's fine. But, you know, they're just like, eh, you probably don't need to wear that on a T-shirt. But I think that's a um, bit of an a-hole move, especially when you just want positive vibes yeah and he was he was obviously wearing it to try and get a reaction out of some people and you know he got one out of me so but 
I'm one to push things aside and not necessarily argue about it. So I would have done a swift Hadouken on him. <laughs> Street Fighter is ass. Force push. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. So kicked off pretty well. Um, I thought we'd just chat basically about the big big things, the big ticket items at Celebration. So we'll start with episode nine and we'll... Let's get I don't into know, it. Should we have a look at this trailer and have another t- and then just break it down a little bit. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. stunning i yeah it's mind-blowing and every time i've I, I think this might be like the 20th time i've watched it or probably even more um when you first see ray it's very reminiscent of the first teaser trailer we got of the force awakens yeah how finn pops up out of the sand mm. and he's breathing heavily and then yeah, it also took me back to the trailer from The Last Jedi where it starts off with Luke, um, again, sort of saying, breathe, yes. just breathe. And then this trailer opens up and... She's as, controlling as, as, her breathing, yeah. yeah. she's breathing. And, you know, that's just the shot of her standing in there in the desert and then, you know, the lightsaber at the, that's, at the side. That's very, like, Sergio Leone, yeah. Western... But she's holding the saber that, you know the jedi have passed on to her and the blaster that han gave her as well so she's holding them close that's for sure yeah um just her outfit looks great too she's gone almost full white um she's got a hoodie now i like that yeah and you know every generation has a legend that starts off that's phantom menace isn't it um yeah it's just some incredible stuff in this trailer i'm just sort of flicking through it the How same. much of that is the actual landscape? Because they filmed in Jordan in... Was it... Wadi Rum? Or yeah. Wadi Rum, I think it's pronounced. Yeah. Because like, that's the same place they shot... Yeah. Um, oh, Lawrence of Arabia and a few other films. Yeah, okay. Um, but I don't think they would have had to use CGI in those backgrounds. Mm. Like, that's all in camera. Well, a lot of it would be all in camera. Mm. And it looks so... Well, good haven't heard whether they've uh, filmed in IMAX again either so was, they didn't mention that no, where they, they normally didn't. would yeah because we know there was a lot of Jakku stuff on in Force Awakens where they used IMAX yeah there were a lot of lot of shops they used IMAX well what are your thoughts on the TIE fighter you've seen here where you know Ray's stopped she's gathered herself and then she's jumped over the TIE fighter as it's flown flown at her um you know if it was 
if he's trying to get her, if it, if it is indeed Kylo and he's trying to get her, why didn't he just uh, open fire with the blasters? But instead he's um, punching forward here with his hands on the handles of the fighter, which look different to his fighter, the interior of his TIE fighter in in uh, The Last Jedi, where he clearly had some joysticks with buttons on top for his legs. Yeah. And in this one, he's got these almost handles that he's pushing pushing outward. Is it a different ship, though? It could be. This could be a s- spot that's... Yeah, it could be. Um, this or just modified. Be, yeah, this could also be a shot from another scene in the movie that's just dropped in the middle. They've been known to do that. Yeah. Because um, there's a lot of speculation about whether they're training. Yes. And so my, my first... When I first watched this during the live stream... I thought, you know, it clearly looks like Kylo, e- even with the hands on the thrusters pushing forward. But my first initial thought was he's going to attack her. But then the more I think about it, why wouldn't it be? Pr- it'd be pretty damn cool if she's jumping over and like latches onto it and then yeah. is like flying on the top of it with a lightsaber yeah. ignited. Yeah, I wonder whether she lands on it or does just jump over it. Do you imagine if she just sliced a wing? Yeah. Oh. Just cut down the middle of it. Yes. Yeah, there's just so much to like in this trailer. Although, I will say, running on sand is extremely hard and she is absolutely <laughs> pelting it. You have to use the force. And if you look at this shot, you see her running towards the camera. You see the faded TIE fighter behind. It's quite obviously different there's a lot of red sort of around the around the windshield I guess I'm going to buy that it looks pretty good oh that is so good and there's the shot yeah. here we're just looking at of her sort of mid air about to clear over this thing that's a lot clearer than my yeah. phone too. yeah it's different looking at it on a computer screen as opposed to cramped over an iPhone this Christmas where do you reckon this could be? I don't know. This this sort of blue mountain planet. Um, do you reckon they could incorporate Batu? Possibly. I mean, it's got that rocky exterior. My immediate thoughts was was simply because of the blue was Edu from Rogue One, but I don't think it is. Um, simply because of the blue and the. Uh, sit, we'll sit. Good dog. And then, you know, the the mountain range. It made me think of Edu, but I don't think it is. But this ship we see fly through um, down to a sort see, of sea. That, now looking at it closely. It doesn't look like Batu, does it? No. There's definitely a sort of a settlements and stuff sort of are perched upon these sort of uh, plateaus and amongst the mountains. Um, but that, that ship is... The ship, yeah. Force Awakens yeah. from Ray's, Ray's vision of the ship that was leaving her as a child. Do you reckon um, this could be a continuation of the flashback? It could be, yeah. Because that would be pretty cool. Because mm. I don't really want the retconning of Ray's parents to be... I want them to still be nobodies, but I still want a little bit else. A little yeah. bit something else, like what drove them to be dr- ju- uh, drunks on Jakku? Yeah, like were they forced into this horrible position mm. that they're like forever regretting it, so they become alcoholics? And yeah, I don't know. We, I think we still need a little bit more, a little bit more meat on those bones for sure. But that's a wicked shot, though. Yeah, it is. And then look forward to this shot in a sort of very red looking forest and Kylo Ren's just sort of picked up this dude with his lightsaber. Now, have I... Slammed him on the floor. If you go back to that guy getting slammed... Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah. Um, If you go frame by frame, the guy that he's slamming on the ground, if you get a clear shot of his hand, it looks like the guy fixing his helmet. Yeah, okay. He's got a fairy hand, and that could just... It could not mean anything, or it could mean yeah. everything. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's interesting, because you know, a lot of people have sort of confirmed that this is just a resistance soldier, but it doesn't really look like a resistance soldier. He's wearing something a lot more... like I don't know, I want to say primitive, but it's not really the word I'm looking for. 
Um, but he really does just pick him up and slam him, slam is him he, down. Has he got a part of his lightsaber stabbing him? Yeah, he's got one of the smaller sabers on the side, like his little... It looks like he's picked him up with the... He's just jammed that side into him and then picked him up and slammed him down. That is so brutal. And he's holding that lightsaber in reverse grip too, so he's just sort of pushed it up and then slammed him down. Like, he's just... All the strength he has. And then there's more of this... You can sort of see a stormtrooper in the background there, which looks cool. There's another one of the... Yeah, just... For those listening along at home, we're sort of just clicking or clicking through this. Do you reckon they're Zuvios? Look at that helmet. Could be a Zuvio. Is that a Zuvio alien? It would be great for JJ to throw Zuvio in somewhere so that his action figure now becomes canon. He act- <laughs> like I won't feel so bad about owning an action figure that doesn't exist in the movie. Um, I never bought him. I'm sorry. <laughs> So now but, we, like if you get to the hand he's got a fairy hand yeah you're right I haven't yeah so we're looking at the shot of Kylo Ren's helmet being welded back together and they're wearing some kind of jewellery on the right hand as well so that could yeah. be an indication of something so it's fairy hands but not to the extent of well, like I Chewbacca no it's just like frilly <laughs> yeah it's like collar like popping out the end of the sleeve sort of thing um but i I like the look of kylo's helmet all put together with this sort of red welding it looks really cool as the shot sort of fades into you can see he's still got half of it i should actually keep the microphone to my face but he's got the other part of the helmet he's yet to attach that's so cool so someone's gone and picked up all these broken pieces at some point (laughs) Could you imagine just someone on mm. Stark? Well, where, where does he do it? On- it was on the, in the elevator on Snoke's ship. Yeah. Could you imagine someone just with a dust pan and broom just yeah. sweeping it up going, I think he might need that someday. Yeah, <laughs> pick out all the chunks of glass and <laughs> we'll just put that in a container because he, le- he left it smashed on the floor for someone to clean up and he's just like, prepare my ship. He's just such a moody man. He's just yeah. like, I'll let somebody clean up my shizen. <laughs> Clean up his Sith. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so now we um now we just sort of merged into a shot of Finn and Poe standing up on a rock and Finn's holding Ray's staff. Better turn into a lightsaber. I've been waiting three movies for a double edged lightsaber. It's gotta have it's got to have some significance mm. to stay around for three movies. Yeah. I think that sort of goes into a shot of BB-8 and the new little droid Dio. What do you think of Dio? Uh, I'm I'm in. I'm digging yeah, it. He I'm looks on. cool. I love. Someone pointed out that he looks like the the part in um, Beetlejuice when the guy gets his head stretched back. Oh, I can't remember it. But I'll have to show you a photo later. He looks like a lamp on a wheel or a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. hairdryer on a unicycle. Looks like a cone. Yeah. Sideways going, and they're like dipping their heads, saying, What is Someone had actually built one in the droid builder's room at Celebration. There was a whole room full of like fan made droids, and someone had already put together a DO. Oh. Is, I've got photos I'd like to show you later on. Uh, next shot, we go to the interior of the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon flying through uh-huh. the space, manned by none other than Chewbacca and Lando Calrissian. Lando Calrissian works every time. Do you reckon he's got Colt 45s there with him? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, that would be called something else. Bolt but 45s. <laughs> <laughs> um, Master Bolt 45s. Yes, there he is. Bespin 45s. He's got his cape. He's got his yellow shirt with the black collar. I love how they're matching... Um, they're connecting Solo... Yeah, the Star Wars story with this. Yeah, I know a lot of people weren't into that. They didn't like the idea of Lando coming back wearing a yellow shirt. I'm like, it's Lando. Like, he can wear whatever colour he wants. And it just so happens that when, when they found him at Bespin, they landed on Bespin, he's just like, I'm going to wear a blue shirt today and my blue cape. Of course, you know, Lando doesn't leave Han with all his capes. Like, Surely when he... When Han, when Han won the Falcon, Lando's gone, all right, the ship's yours, but you're not taking my cape. But he flew off first, and then yeah. it's like, after he won it, he's probably like, let me on, let me on, 
You can't have everything on yeah. here. Yeah. You've taking already got... <laughs> I'm, take, I'm taking my case and I'm taking my wet bar. <laughs> yes. Yes. Surely Han was like, I don't need a wet bar. I don't need a bunch of capes. You can take them, Lando. That's fine. Han's more rugged. Yeah. He was a scoundrel, not a smooth operator. And Han obviously had just a bunch of white shirts and black vests just but- stashed in there, like... Because Lando had something to wear at the end of Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> I still find that funny. Yeah. Let's go raid his <laughs> closet for his clothes. He's frozen in carbonite. He won't mind. you got a terrible fashion sense, Han. <laughs> Han. I forgot Lando calls him Han. So I'm, oh, I just can't wait to see how Lando gets brought into the story. Oh, um, Need it. And he looks great too. He because, does. like... When he was at the 40th anniversary back in um, was that Orlando, Orlando, yeah. he didn't look too great. So they and I know he was. There's footage of him boxing and getting into shape, and it's incredible for his age. Give me that skiff. Yeah, so we're back on this Jordan planet. Um, I don't know if it's Jakku. It doesn't look like Jakku. Jakku's mostly sand. It doesn't look like Tatooine. It's, I don't know. It sort of reminds me of I think Jeddah. Yeah, but yeah. half of Jeddah is wiped out. Yeah, because they've shown what Jeddah looks like in the comics, and that's you know half of it's exposed, like half of it's been pulled apart. The other half of the planet looks normal, so it could be on the far side of the planet. But it'd be nice again to. It looks link like, everything yeah, up it's because looking it, like there's still civilizations living on this planet um well yeah those behind the scene photos they showed there's yeah. a whole bunch of aliens dancing around yeah, and it looks like a bollywood video yeah so very interesting so it looks like there's a bit of a chase there's all these they look like uh, moisture evaporators but i don't think they are they just look like towers or something there's a couple of jet troopers this happens really quickly yeah it i i really didn't notice it for quite mm. some time got Poe and Finn on this sort of skiff with 3PO. 3PO is holding on for dear life. And so that a, so, A-wing? Yeah, so here we have an A-wing. Now this is very blink and you'll miss it stuff. So that's definitely an A-wing. And that's a... That's an Imperial Star Destroyer behind it, or it looks like an Imperial Star Destroyer. Um, yeah, that's frame by frame go through and... Yeah, like this is... It's, I'm trying to go as frame by frame as I can, and it's not picking up. So I wonder if this is a flashback. Yeah. I don't know. We've seen A-Wings. We've seen A-Wings, but we haven't, because that had the... Yeah. That looks like an old school... Like, it's even got the... If you go there, that yeah. that, that red bit down the bottom... It's almost like a... Um, from the Clone War era. Yeah. The, like the... the Star Destroyers we see at the start of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, so that's directly whether, where whether my... The, yeah, whether the Resistance have managed to get their hands on some of these old Clone Wars era ships... Would be and, so cool, man. You know, they started building up a fleet of old, you know, old put-together Star Destroyers. And we know that they're, they're no... They're, they're still a threat, those ships. Oh, yeah. Like, they're no weakling. Like, the Empire just evolved into what they had. Um, next shot, we've got... Chewie's medal. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I think it'll be Hans, and I think Hans... Yeah. I, think, I don't know. I hope Leia, for some reason, to Chewie. Um, I'd like to see... If if we're not going to get any more Chewie in films, I'd I'd like to see him go back to his family. And <gasps> Kashyyyk. Give me Kashyyyk know, one more time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I still want to see Chewie, like, for years to come. Oh, yeah, I think... Like, I don't want to... I don't want to be without my favourite Wookiee. And I don't think... Uh, is it Jonas? Jonas, yeah. Jonas. I don't think he's ready to give it up either. No. no Things for, for Chewbacca. Um, yeah, this was a bit emotional, this shot of Leia holding Ray arm in arm. So obviously they've done something with this shot because that costume wasn't even around when they filmed The Force Awakens so they're doing yeah. some trickery here because they said they're using all original footage mm. from deleted scenes mm. and things and, like that so and we've seen shot of you know Rey and Leia hugging from The yeah. Force Awakens so whether there's some like, different takes uh, different angles used 
Um, they've had to just alter what Ray's wearing. Um, I don't think it would be too hard nowadays. Like, even back in Gladiator with Russell Crowe, they were, you know, an actor passed away on while they were filming yeah. and added scenes with him. So it's very doable, but it's very, very emotional mm. seeing Carrie again. Yeah. I'm not sure what's how big her role is going to be. I think it's, I think we're all going to expect something minimal. Um, I hope it's more than minimal. Um, I hope they can use the footage. Yeah, quite I, well. If if they couldn't use it, I don't think they'd do it. I think they're pretty positive in what they can do. So Ray's just dropped a tear here, so we're not sure why she's crying. Um, better be it. Better not be because the character has passed away. Mm. So this shot is straight out of Seven Samurai. Have you seen Seven Samurai? A long time ago, but the reason I got into Akira Kurosawa films was because of Star Wars. Yeah, like me too. Hearing about Hidden Fortress and yeah. the role it played yeah, with Jimbo um, and this is this yeah, Jimbo's awesome. Yeah, but this is a shot straight out of Seven Samurai where you sort of see the Seven Samurai sort of standing on a hillside like this, and here we've got seven characters standing there we've got Chewie in the back uh, BB-8 D.O. 3PO and then Ray Foe uh, Foe it's the it's the two <laughs> of them Foe Pameron um, <laughs> Poe and Finn standing in the foreground a little bit here too um, all looking awesome like Finn looks so good like he's I can't wait to see Finn in this um, but yeah they're all standing looking over at what we get in the next shot is the ruins of we're that assuming is, the deck, second Death Star in the in the ocean here. It doesn't look like it could be Yavin. That's the only yeah, and it would make more sense because of Return of the Jedi having the final ju- showdown yeah. with the Emperor. Yeah, um, but that's stunning. But you, you look at this sort of grassy looking planet, and then you look down. And there's this sort of horrify- horrifyingly like this stormy ocean and these waves that are ridiculous do you know what I want to see I though I can't tell what Ray's carrying there but she's holding something a backpack yeah a looks- backpack full of snacks <laughs> a bag of sand they got Jedi jubes they're just like little starbursts for Jedis <laughs> a, bottle of, <laughs> a bottle of Jawa juice oh give me some Jawa do you want some Jawa juice honey she went back to R2 and got bottles of green milk Ooh, yeah, that's that's insane, man. If like, what I'm hoping for, like, I don't know how they're gonna get there because mm. there's quite a distance between the ruin and them. You think about how big that Death Star is. It kind of looks like in the shot it could be, you know, half a mile away. Yeah, but this is gonna be like on the, around the side of the planet. If it's that big, if the Death Star was that big, this is on the other side of the planet. Yeah, and actually, in a way, like this is far over the horizon. That's a very good way of looking at it because the thing is so ginormous. Yeah, um, it was a small moon. Yeah, and you've obviously seen all the links that people are putting towards this and the concept art from the Force Awakens. Yes, I have. That was I. I, I went back to my own book and was like, "Oh, mm. this is good." So there's this whole idea of having to go find something underwater in the ruins of the Death Star. I really hope they do because like what I was trying to say before is I hope she gets her scavenger on mm. and they all go on like an Easter egg hunt inside the Death Star mm. and find something like a holocron or there's some, something there's important that they can all just... Yeah. I, I'm interested to see what happens here, whether they're going to have to go into it into the ruins here and find whatever they need to go go find they're obviously there for a reason this looks to be like them coming out and finding exactly what they came for oh yeah um so th- this is big this is like this is me losing my sith <laughs> when i saw it because this is just tying you know the final film in the skywalker saga this is tying up everything it's incredible. Yeah, and it's you know apologies to everyone that didn't want to didn't want another Death Star in in Episode Nine. Well, it's t- here you go. You've got your, you've got another Death Star. I mean, it's, it's only bad if it's still fully operational. <laughs> that thing's still fully operational.
I wonder where they filmed this. I wish there was like an actual set, even though they couldn't yeah. do it. Let's build a life-size fallen Death Ethan. Star. Do you reckon they surf out there? I hope so. <laughs> and then there's like 1960s. <laughs> Some age boys. Rock lobster. Scarif cruising. Scarifornia. And the title reveal. Yeah, and the title reveal. The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, we missed the laugh too. Yeah. But, um, the Emperor. Luke saying cackling. no one's ever really gone, taken from The Last Jedi, and then we saw here the Emperor's cackling, which apparently is taken out of one of the other films. It's not, they didn't record a new chuckle for this trailer. It was taken out of... Um, it's hard to say. I need to listen to it again. And try. What do you reckon? Uh, it's it's got to be Jedi or Sith. I was thinking Revenge of the Sith when he's throwing the pods down yeah. at, you know, when he's fighting Yoda. That could could mm. be it. Because he laughs a lot in that. He's very sinister. Yeah. He does a little bit in Jedi too, where, you know, he's walking down the steps and he's going, good, good. Yeah. Oh, it's so powerful. You know. It's so powerful. And, uh, yeah, Rise of Skywalker. What, what did you think as this flashed up on screen? I was immediately trying to abbreviate it. Yeah, I was like... Tross. <laughs> yeah, Tross. Um, Star Wars Tross. Watching Tross tonight. I could be watching Tross. I could do it. Did you have any predictions of what the title could be? I wanted hope in there, just like to tie it back to episode mm. four, but... Um, I think in this title there is a lot of hope. It's not spoken, but... You know, oh, it's, it's there, yeah. It's absolutely there. Um, there was a rumour going around the day before the panel, so on the Thursday night that the title had leaked, and it was, you know, there was a lot of people saying it's it's leaked, the title's out, it's Will of the Force. Okay. Uh, I, th- I, I think I would have been disappointed with Will of the Force. I like the fact that Skywalker is in the title. Mm. It's really sort of, it is bringing it home. Mm. Hello, wife. Hello. Don't mind us. No. Unless you want to come and talk. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Where were we? Uh, yeah, I think I would have been disappointed if it was like um, if it was Will of the Force. Um, don't know. It's just doesn't, f- have, doesn't have the same ring to it. I feel like if us fans can pick the title before it's announced, it's not a good title. Yeah. Not saying that it's a bad title, but. They've obviously, like, they got to put a lot of thought into it, and mm. I'm pretty happy with the title. Yeah, very happy. Um, I, I I predicted Rise we was going to be in it. I thought nice. it might have been Rise of Resist, Rise of the Resistance. I think I sort of I predicted Rise based on you know Re- Revenge, Return, then Rise. So that was sort of I sort of predicted that a little while ago. I don't know if I spoke about it on the podcast at any stage, but. I'm not sure, but that that that's pretty cool. I think we might have spoken about it through through messages, but the three the, R's the putting Skywalker in there—I would never would have guessed that at all. Now, a lot of people are saying the Skywalker could be a new term for like Jedi or Force user, yeah. And I don't like that idea. I'm kind of into it. Like, I want. You know, I like the idea that there's Jedi's and Sith, yeah. but I like the idea of the fact that those ideologies are mm. pretty old school, and you know, you don't have to be a Jedi, you don't have to be a Sith to be a mm. Force wielder. Yeah. So I'm interested to see whether, yeah, I don't know. I kind of, I'm kind of open to the idea of Skywalker being, you know, the next generation of Jedi. Do you reckon it was Luke being like the new Jedi Order is called the Skywalkers? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, this is interesting in the Thrawn novels, the most recent Thrawn novels by Timothy Zahn, we learn that the Chiss, so Thrawn species, their term in their language for a force, someone that has force abilities, are Skywalkers. That's what they call them. Oh, okay. So that's an interesting little tidbit. Um, I don't think... So it can, could very think, well be heading that way. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily... Um, something they're going to link up 
particularly with episode nine linking up to those Thrawn novels. It was just an interesting little little tidbit that was let out through um, in the most recent one, Alliances, where it's you know you got two stories: you got Thrawn and Anakin in the past, and then Thrawn and Vader, and it's mostly about Thrawn, you know, working out that they're the same person. Oh. Um, well, I still haven't read through, that yet. And through Thor- Thrawn learning about Anakin Skywalker, he sort of says, interesting that Skywalker's your name. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, you know, that's what we call Force users back in, in the Chiss planet, you know, where they're from in the Outer Rim and the Unknown Regions, um, that, you know, when they come across Force users, they're known as Skywalkers. That actually doesn't sound too bad. I could be on board with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know, I think, you think about, I don't know, this. how much history of, is there of Skywalkers? Like, we only know as far back as Shmi Skywalker. Like, is that a name that she took on herself? Was she just born to regular parents that were also Skywalkers? Is it a name that's been... Was that old Shivp putting his magic inside been, yeah. of her? Yeah. That's a bit raw. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Immaculate conception of the force. Yeah. Medical orions. He filled her with his magic. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of behind it. But, don't know, to, to end the term Jedi seems like it's... I don't know. I don't want... I don't want the end of the yeah. Jedi, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because like I still want to spend the next, you know, how many years of my life referring to lightsaber force using people as Jedi. Like, they're always going to be Jedi. Jedis and Sith. So whether it's to the point of just the end of episode nine here, they're just going to be Skywalkers or whatever. Like, And I don't want to, like, yeah, and nine, but there's no telling, like, in 15 years, 20 years, that... They're like, all right, we'll bring them all back. Mm. We'll bring back Finn, Poe, and Ray, and yeah. whatever, and just continue the trilogy on for another three. And mm. could happen. It could happen. I, it, it would be awesome. It would well, be awesome. The entire panel was really good. I'm, I'm looking forward to sitting down and watching it again. Um, it was really, YouTube. it was really cool to see um, Jaina. Is it Jaina? The new. Oh yeah, um, the new character. Yeah, yeah, the Naomi Ackie's character. Yeah, who looks like the daughter of Cowra's in. They teased it as much, didn't they? Mm. They didn't give a solid. Well, answer. no, she she said, "Oh, well, there could be a lot of Cowra's in." He's like <laughs> basically spreads his seed everywhere. <laughs> you know, Lando's not limited to to one woman. No, I don't know. I think. As much as it was a tease, I think it was also a confirmation about who she is. I could dig it. I didn't want Finn to be his son, but yeah. I'm happy with a daughter. Yeah. I think that'd be interesting. Well, I mean, how long have we got? Eight months? It's, it's going to be a bit of a wait. It's going to be a wait, but it's going to go fast because... Give it three, four months, we'll get another mm. trailer. Yeah. And then fully get the promotional mm. run happening and get the first lot of merchandise and toys come October 4th I think it is where Force Triple Force, Force Friday Triple Force Friday yes don't know who's going to do that here in Australia because there's no one left to do Force Fridays maybe Toy World maybe but Target perhaps they might get on board well Target always used to get on board but they never got much of the stock and yeah. then uh, speaking of uh, department stores I went to the where was I? It was the Norlunga Kmart? Yeah. I was like, let's just check out the Star Wars section. They had toys from 2015. <laughs> there was a gin or so. <laughs> and I was like, it's from Wave 1. <laughs> and there was a full row of pegs full of her. Oh, really? And I'm like... That's a very old toy. My local Kmart doesn't have a Star Wars section anymore. Yeah, they they just th- that that's all they had, yeah. man. And I was just I, I I ended up walking around with a budget lightsaber, pissing off my girlfriend because it you know those lightsabers that they call like light swords. Yeah. So it was like two to five dollars, yeah. and then you extend it out. It looks like a lightsaber. It's yeah. got a hilt, but then you press the button. 
and then it's just it's got mechanical sounds of like a sword hitting another sword mm. so i was just running around the toy section like <laughs> hitting like <laughs> not attacking my girlfriend but like j- she's just like put it away you're drawing attention to us and i don't like attention <laughs> i was like come on but it's making a sword noise it's making a sword noise <laughs> She was just like, put it Those away. Licensed free lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. She did not think so. Yeah. Um, next big panel, I guess, was... What was next? Mandalorian was the day after episode nine? So I think the... It's all a bit blurred to me now. They had a remembering Rebels panel. Oh, yeah. Um, the other day. I, th- I didn't see that at all. When you go back and watch it online, I think one of the funniest moments was someone in the crowd had made a Dave Filoni action figure and given it to Dave Filoni. Yes. And it was like a 12-inch action figure of Dave Filoni. And That's he's just hilarious. like, Okay, little Dave, I'll take it to you. <laughs> and, like, I was just like, yes, oh, man, this is so I good. I can't wait to see that now. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a highlight. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, Clone Wars was, I think, yeah, definitely was, but I was still on my holidays, so. yeah. This was huge. Clone Wars was great. You've just pretty much gotten through the entire series within what two months, maybe three. I've had a little. I've had a short break in the last three weeks, yeah. or probably even month. But I'm back into it. I've got one disc left of um, the Lost Files, yeah. Lost Missions. Yeah. Um, so I've just seen Ahsoka leave the Jedi Order. Yeah. Um, that damn near broke my heart yeah. I didn't expect it to mm. pack as big of a punch as it did um, and I wanted to get up to date so I could watch the new season and fully just immerse myself in the for probably $30 because I know it's, it's- Maybe. But I have to sort this out on my own. Without the council. And without you. Where exactly are you from? in the upper levels of Coruscant. You're probably better off down here. With the Jedi running around, starting wars. I've watched so many of my brothers fall during this war. Fives, Echo, Heavy. Master Yoda, your thoughts on how to win the war? No longer certain that one ever does win a war. I am. You'll never see any Jedi around here. It's not safe down here. Things could have gotten messy for you. That's why I've got my ship. What squad are you taking in? Experimental Unit Clone Force 99. The cavalry has arrived! Glad to have you back, Commander. The good is new. Maybe a little better.
was hoping for Kenobi. Why are you here? <laughs> Um, yeah, like you're saying, it's it's nuts how like Ahsoka's evolved over the years. Cause I kind of remember the start of it. I didn't sort of jump into Clone Wars until probably season two was airing, so it was probably 2009 or 10. Um, and even I was uncertain back then. Like, was like, why does Anakin have an apprentice? And I think that was pretty much the pretty much the feeling all around at I the think, time. I think the gist of it was like where is she like mm. they've made a character so they've obviously got to get rid of her at some point yeah i mean, i watched the first two seasons um as it aired or as well as it could air mm. um and then i lost track of it and sort of forgot about it really mm. um but it's 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 kind of incredible she's Ahsoka I thought over the years is specifically probably from this the arc you're talking about where she leaves the Jedi Order like since since then she's become one of my favourite characters like in Star Wars in general well especially when she's in Rebels yeah like when she returns in Rebels I'm, mm. I was just like ooh and there's still so much future for this character with Ma- massively like she's almost <laughs> coffee yeah. um yeah, she's almost become like a Gandalf the White sort of character. Which she's, she's a beast. Know, serves a higher purpose, and there's more. For, there's more for her to do. Um, I like it, her look on being a Force user as well, where she doesn't mm-hmm. identify as a Jedi. Yeah, which is really cool. She's a Skywalker. She's a Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's this. Se- there's going to be so much in this season. It's only twelve episodes, but. You know, I think from what we understand, we're getting the Bad Batch arc, which we've seen before as sort of animatics. They Is released. that with Bounty Hunters? No, it's with the clone squad of... Um, but that was in the trailer, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, they did show a clip from that episode, but they sort of released those four episodes after the Clone Wars was initially cancelled by Disney, um, just in their sort of rough animatic form with with the dialogue and stuff in, in intact. Into the Bad Batch. Yeah, so that's going to be four episodes, and then it looks like the the other eight are all going to be. Um, there's going to be a four episode arc of Ahsoka going into the underworld and dealing with that, and then it's going to be the Siege of Mandalore. I'm excited for that. I think yeah. anything that I've liked out of the um, Clone Wars so far is the Mandalorian arcs. Mm. They are just mind blowing. Yeah. And just seeing in the trailer there, it's uh, Bo-Katan that's um, there in the hood sort of okay, cool. trying to find Ahsoka. So I think she's going to try and get Ahsoka to come and help with, with the problems with Maul on Mandalore and trying to get Mandalore back. And um, I think it was a Celebration in Orlando or maybe one of the San Diego Comic Cons they did the... Uh, they did a Clone Wars panel and Dave sort of gave a rough outline for what he was going to do with the Siege of Mandalore um, and that was that had basically left Ashley Eckstein in tears um, at that panel because um, he sort of explained to her you know that Anakin sort of because he's about to go off and save the Chancellor that he leaves Ahsoka with some of the 501st uh, with Rex to deal with the Mandalore, the Siege of Mandalore, and that you know he yeah you know, he introduces her to her clone squad, and they've all painted their helmets to reminisce, yeah, to, to sort of align themselves with what Ahsoka has, which you see in the trailer, and it's yeah, it's a pretty epic moment. They showed a clip in. I'm pretty sure they showed a clip of that in the panel. Yeah, and then she starts getting teary eyed, yeah, and crying and stuff, and like I think. Just the respect they all have for Ahsoka mm. um, is so cool, and just I would love to get a helmet and have that painted on it. Yeah, that'd be so that'd, good. That'd be wicked. Well, as some action figures. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Come on, yes. Hasbro. Have a full army, mm. army build, and recreate mm. that scene. 
done. That'd be so good. Um, but yeah, Clone Wars is going to be pretty damn epic when that when they hit. Um, I've been a big Clone Wars fan for a long time, and you know, in terms of the action figures, they're some of the best action figures that Hasbro's done. Um, that was one of my favourite lines to collect was the Clone Wars, and it, as a series, it really kept Star Wars alive for a period where. You it was know, a bit dormant, wasn't it? Yeah, after you know, after Revenge of the Sith, that was kind of it, and then the Clone Wars sort of come come along three years later in '08, and you know, sort of kept things going until you know the Disney buyout and all that, and then you know, Star Wars found a whole the new a whole new life. So, and you know, within a few years, we've had five. We're going to be having you know five new movies and another series and another series animated series and then it's, it's a good time to be a star wars fan yeah and uh i guess that segues into speaking of other series is the mandalorian panel which happened on i want to say it was it was day it was the sun Friday, Saturday, sunday yeah sunday. I think that's the third day yeah um and i didn't get to see any of the mandalorian panel i th- i can't remember what we were doing that morning um but we weren't watching the live stream we were lining up no, I've completely forgotten what we're doing. I think we're lining up at Hasbro um, for those exclusives. But we sort of see, saw a few clips from a distance on the Star Wars show screens. Um, so it's a, it's a panel I need to sit down and watch watch now on YouTube in its entirety. But it's cool, man. Like so having Favreau, Filoni, mm. uh, Gina Carano, uh, what we got, Carl Weathers. Yeah. And the Mandalorian himself. Um, um, Pablo Pascal. Yes. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Um, you can just tell from their reactions that this is going to be something mm. awesome. Yeah. They are so excited. And like someone like Carl Weathers, who's a pretty seasoned actor, he's like, I'm in. Mm. Yeah, like this is he so seen, cool coming out on stage I saw a clip of him coming out on stage and he just looked in his element like Loves he was it. thrilled to be a part of Star Wars and I think you know the other two actors that were out on stage too I think they were equally ex- as excited to be a part of this thing um, you know this is so, you if you, you could probably explain what, how the panel went more so than I can because I haven't watched it myself but in terms of behind the scenes footage uh, um, but, oh the footage they showed... Uh, so, first of all, the couch con session happened at 1.30 again, mm. Monday morning. Um, I had a cough and a phone call to say I wasn't coming into work because I just couldn't be bothered at that time of the day. Um, but it was a bit of a letdown. Nothing on the people running the panel at all it was just literally we i was expecting footage and they showed it to the crowd and i get why they did that yeah people like yourself traveled all the way over across the other side of the world so something shouldn't not everything should be streamed something mm. should be held sacred mm. to people paying that money and going to the convention themselves yeah. Um, but the first thing they showed was, um, well, they turned the they turned the panel off to the crowd at home, and then they showed a behind the scenes reel of them just basically on set. Mm. Um, the guys at ILM have started making models again, yeah, and making these rigs and literally just doing it in their basements at home like John Knoll going yeah. like I'm so excited for this TV show that I'm going to be in my shed building a rig because I want to do this awesome project yeah that sounds like, awesome and then they showed later in a trailer that didn't go to air they're using that same footage of the live action model going past and going, yeah oh that's stunning. that's insane um and then it cuts back to the guys talking and something i really took away from it was um feloni and favreau's friendship mm. where it might you thought it might have just been a work relationship of but they've known each other for the past 10 yeah. years and they had this funny thing of 
um, back in 2008. Favreau was up at Skywalker Ranch doing the mixing on Iron Man. Yeah. And he brought in Filoni to be the first test subject of... Oh, well. What, you know, check this out. Do you reckon it's all right? Yeah. Filoni was like, oh, actually, do you want to come check out a TV show I'm working on with George? It's The Clone Wars. So oh, wow. They were both test subjects for these Each projects. other's projects back then. Yeah, so that was a really cool story. That's fantastic. Um, so check it out when you get a chance. Yeah, oh, that, that might be my viewing for tonight, actually, the Mandalorian panel. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. I love Favreau. I love Filoni. Um, they had no moderator. Yeah. Either. It was them two just uh, like, geeking out. And yeah. Like, we'll, we'll bring some crowd out, and then mm. like, we'll bring the cast out. Mm. And then they cut away, but they ended up showing... A si- like a sizzle reel of a scene with Carl Weathers and the Mandalorian and he's basically the Mandalorian is accepting a job yeah um, and then you go into the underground which looks like Tatooine yeah um, like Jawas I and mean, the the bar there is just blatantly Mos, Mos Eisley Cantina oh, yeah. it has to be I can't yeah. think there's Jawas around you know there's, there's a shot there of the Mandalorian riding a Jewback um, How, if they actually do that I am buying that toy because if they don't make a toy of it they're yeah. missing out on people's money yeah like I like Boba Fett I've, I've always been you have, a, oh, you have I, a fetish I have a I have, I'm in the closet about I'm in denial about having a Boba Fetish hey I'm getting um, a tattoo next week mate. yeah that'd be so good yes indeed I'd I always say how overrated Boba Fett is, but I also have a shelf dedicated to Boba Fett stuff. But think about how cool he looks. The, yeah. The look of him has created a whole mm. religion or, you know, like a Mandalorian. It's yeah. A, it's a world. It's a planet. It's, mm. a, it's a race of people. It's yeah. From that one drawing that Joe Johnson did back in the late 70s. Absolutely. Early 80s. Like, and just... Yeah, I don't know, the Mandalorian, like, the series, like, how much has drawn, the, like, I saw a small clip how they basically said, you know, we've gone back through everything that we've, that has been written about Mandalorians in history, you know, they're pulling things from the holiday special, all you need to do is yeah. look at his rifle and go, that's straight out of the holiday special, it's, well, yeah, I mean, it's, they've, they've turned what was more of a staff into a blaster, um, into a rifle, and that looks incredible, and there's just so like and Boba Fett riding the dragon thing you know yeah. now he's riding the Jewback it's, it's stuff we've wanted to see of Boba Fett for years and now we're going to see it with this new character which you know it's, I don't want it to be Boba Fett I want, it, I want him to no, be his own I, thing I want him to sort of symbolise more of what Boba Fett was originally and sort of the man with no name well they're definitely you know, going uh, Pedro said one of his biggest influences was Clint Eastwood in yeah. those western films Gunslinger yeah um, and that's very evident in the footage that was shown yeah and you can find if you want to wait and see the actual footage I'm sure it will be out later in the year but it is available online if you dig deep enough and look hard enough it's it, it's, it's poor quality it shouldn't it's very poor quality but it's it's out there but for us sweaties we need to get in and see everything <laughs> super yeah. fast yeah yeah need it now there's, um, there's no time for waiting because I saw the footage and I was mm. like this is truly mind boggling stuff yeah the Kowalkian I don't think I'm saying that correctly but the the monkey lizard the monkey lizard like salacious crumb on a spit and then it's just sad because you see this other one in a cage like <laughs> almost crying looking at a, his his friend his friend or Could be his brother or mother or, or wife father. yeah just getting roasted literally just but getting cooked yeah and then things like uh the ig assassin droid which <gasps> they've sort of said it's not ig88 it's ig11 yes I have and he's that. and seeing him for a split second in action spitting around and blasting stuff it's like, oh my god what that is the first time you're actually seeing an ig88 or like a IG model like fully going berserk around mm. killing everything yeah um, in live action because we did yeah. get a couple of those in the Clone Wars yes I should say live action and they were cool in the Clone Wars too did you see those Jawas in that footage yeah they, they got like red eyes yeah like, 
Yeah. Yeah, I want to see some more Jawa action. To see that, you know, they are filthy little creatures that no one likes and, you know, they just cause trouble. I need, yeah, I, I think this show, like, while I've got high expectations and excitement for episode nine... I'm leaning more towards this at the moment. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be... a time period that mm, I love. Yeah, and it's going to be world building. It's going to expand the universe a lot more. Huge. And if it's eight to ten episodes, you know, that's that's eight hours of Star Wars that we're going to be able to consume over and over and over and over again. And They you know, have said as well, I, I don't know where I read it, so it's probably not... Don't take this as confirmation, but it will be... It won't be a binge... Yeah, streaming show they're going to do it like weekly weekly episode as week, opposed to a big dump is, yeah. which is dope man yeah. because if I just binged that 8 hours mm. I'd be a bit upset that there's I have you know because when you watch any mm. show and binge it and it's the first weekend of you're yeah. like oh well now I've got to wait a whole year yeah there's a part of me that's like I'd love to sit and binge the whole lot but at the same time Stretch part of the back. excitement about being a Star Wars fan and is waiting for these movies to come out is yeah. you know doing what we're doing right now is speculating about what the future and being excited and waiting and you know you get the new trailers you get toys coming out and it's all part of that and you know especially with show tv shows these days like game of thrones and such it's it's something you watch an episode and then you can watch it again during the week weekly yeah like uh what's happening at the moment with mm. game of thrones i haven't actually watched it but there's always like every Monday there is weekly memes, there is weekly discussions. And yeah. Everybody loves it and I want that to be yeah. the Mandalorian yeah. atmosphere. I want to be able to sit, you know, watch it when it airs, watch it when it drops and then, you know, watch it the next day and then a couple of days throughout the week, watch it again. And I think we should do a review show. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I know we tried to do it with Resistance but sort of Just, fell back on it. Mm. But... I think that's because I wasn't I this so much into the show. Yeah. But... This will be doable. I'll be watching, taking notes, and mm. watch it multiple times, and yeah, I am I would love yeah. to go back and review them once we've done Yeah. That. Yeah, that was... Yeah, sort of... I'd sort of had that in mind myself as well. Um, yeah, it's... I don't know. It's just... You know, week to week, is it feels better to me because, you know, you can really... It indulge in these episodes week to week like I said watch it three or four times you really know what's happened in that episode you can pick out all the easter eggs this show's going to be littered with easter eggs well, yeah they've literally said they've got 42 years worth of stuff in there <laughs> yeah. And-, and yeah and you know we're going to pick these things apart a week at a time and then you know come into the next week's episode come into episode 2 we're 100% in what knowing what we've seen in the first episode and then you you know things are going to jump out a bit easier in the second episode and you better to do it over and over again and week to week to week considering how Filoni is with the clone wars and rebels like remember that clone wars episode where Ahsoka's trapped on a plaza planet and um she's being hunted by all the, the Trandoshans yeah Trandoshans and you go into that room and it's like a trophy room of mm. all the things they've hunted. Yeah. And that was just like a treasure trove of like everything that's dope about Star Wars was mm. in that shot. There was, there was a Tauntaun and a... I want to say there was a Gungan head. I can't remember, yeah, but oh, it was... I think it's fresh in my mind because I watched it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But, um, imagine that with Filoni and Favreau in mm. live action. Yeah. Just the fact that they can literally have you know actual mm. objects hidden yeah um, you just know that you know Favreau is such a big fan of Star Wars and Filoni himself is a fan and Filoni is the student of George Lucas like yeah. Filoni yeah. is George Lucas for the next generation of Star Wars I hope you know I hope he gets to the point where he's already the, like he's not <coughs> Lucas's uh, what's the best way to say it I consider him Lucas now. Yeah. But he's nowhere near Lucas's stature because Lucas mm. is Lucas. Yeah. But Filoni... Give it time. Filoni's a god. Yeah. <laughs> I was so thrilled to be able to meet him. Like, I'm just... I hate you. I was... I was, <laughs> I was, I was out to dinner with a bunch of friends. Um, the guys from First Order Transmissions and a couple other guys. Um, we're all out to dinner. Did you have deep... Dish pizza. We had deep dish pizza. We're at uh, yay, yay. 
I'm going to go with yay. I want to try and make some because I can't go to Chicago. So we're, we're at a restaurant called Giordano's. There's a few of them throughout Chicago. And uh, we're having dinner, dinner there one night. And just sitting around, just finishing our meals. We just finished eating. Um, or we hadn't ate, eaten yet. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, we were just about to pay our bills. And some one of the guys has jumped up and said, you know, there's Dave Filoni. Like, we were sitting alongside the window. And this guy just casually walks past wearing a cap. You know, he's got a big jacket on. They've taken off. I've gone. I've 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 sat, I've sat there going, oh, you know, he's he's he's, gonna, he's not gonna he's not gonna get him. And then we, I reckon I, I sat there for about another half a minute to a minute, and the wife's gone. They're not coming back. Maybe they got. Maybe they caught up with him. So I've just gone. Crap! <laughs> I jumped out of my seat. I've run outside. I've 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 strode down the street as quickly as I can. I can see them all bunched together in front of a little store, like a little takeaway store. And they're all just chatting with him, and I've walked up, and they've intro- They've just said, "Oh, this is Buddy. My book. This is our buddy Jesse." You know, and it was almost like you know he didn't realise that we chased him down the street. <laughs> it was just so it happened that, that you know they made it seem cool that you know they've gone, Dave. Hey, was that, is that you? And he's turned around, and we literally just sat, stood there and had a chat for 10, 5 or ten minutes. Got photos with him, dude. That's and, dope. You know, he just casual as like he was just popping out to get some hot dogs for dinner to go back to his hotel. Um, and it just happened to be across the ride from where we were having dinner that night. And you know, he just stopped and chatted to everyone, and you know, he's telling a few stories about. You know, he asked the guys just before I got there. He said, "What do you think of the Clone Wars trailer? You know, what did, what did you guys think?" Like. He was genu- genuinely interested in what, he's what the guys had to say. Fan as well, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. He wanted to know what what the guy, what we all had to say, and then you know we sort of talked about the Mandalorian for a minute, and you know he's just he he couldn't spoke highly enough of being able to work with Favreau on this thing, and you it know would be he's amazing to work with such yeah. a creative guy and yeah. having the two of them together would have been yeah. insane but he's just he was so humble and you know he was more than happy to just stop and take some photos with us all and yeah it was incredible it really made our day we all just walked back like so he walked into the shop he walked into the store where he was getting his dinner and you we all sort of walked off two kilometres back to your dinner I, so I started walking <laughs> off and just I turned around and just looked at the guys and I'm just like high fives guys and we just got high fives on the street and we just come back and we're just gushing we're just fanboying so hard we couldn't believe it and we're just like oh don't you know maybe we should not post our photos till we get back to the hotel because if if we if there's any chance that we've geotagged it you know people will be able to find him all of a sudden yeah. the hotel will be swamped um, so we'll give it a couple of hours we'll get back to the hotel room and yeah got back that night and I just posted I was just like yes uh, yeah, <laughs> just I made my day when you posted that, I was just like, respect. Oh, that, is, that is bucket worthy. It wasn't the best photo, but I didn't get I tried, it. <laughs> I, I tried lighting it up for you, and then I was like, oh, I, I can't fix the photo, but you've yeah. still got the photo. Yeah. Even though my eyes are slightly closed. <laughs> it doesn't care. matter, and, No, it doesn't matter at all. The presence of someone so cool. Like, it was... That was definitely one of the highlights of the whole weekend. That um, was another thing with the panel as well, Filoni... They need for the Mandalorian. There was a scene where they needed stormtroopers, mm. and this is again like how you said yeah. you had a chat with him for ten minutes. They were like, "We've got no stormtrooper suits left." I have heard this story. Yeah. Um. So we need some stormtroopers, and Filoni's like, "I know some stormtroopers. I, I know some stormtroopers. I know a few guys. <laughs> yeah, I know a few guys." So he calls up the five o first, and. Their costumes are so amazingly built that they got them down, and then there's a photo of like 20, 30 guys in a scene, guys and girls in a scene, and um, and then Fav- I think it was Favreau. I can't remember who said it, but he goes at the end of the day, you know, one they get to be in this TV show, and it, and two, their uniforms and costumes are now screen used mm. props. Mm. Um, and that and that's just with those two guys and the ten minutes you got to hang out with them. Mm. It just goes to show their love and passion for mm. the fans and yeah, the fact that this is their job. It goes back to that little story from the Force Awakens where um, you know there are a couple of droid builders that build an R two D two at a celebration. I think it was, and you know they just sort of jokingly said to. Was it Kathleen Kennedy? I think. I think it was Kathy. Yeah. And they basically said, you know, if you need some droids, don't 
you know, here's a card. And, you know, within a few months, she'd actually gone and called them and, you know, and they were brought on for the project to build the droids. Like, it's really, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I give a lot of credit to Kathy and other people at Lucasfilm for giving people a chance mm. and giving the fans a go because, mm. like, if it was, you know, Star Wars could be here. But it could have been nothing. But mm. without fans, it's it's everything. Yeah. And, like, everyone holds it near it's and dear. It just shows that, you know, they understand that the fans are, you know, they know they know about this stuff. Mm. And, you know, there's people out there that know how to build this. They do it as a hobby for their, you know, this is what they do in their spare time. They build props for movies. And to sort of acknowledge that, it'd be quite easy to enlist a special effects company to go on, like, a, just a random company that's worked on who knows what to say oh yeah no, build, us, another- build us droids yeah. like you may as well just stop and go get people that know exactly all the details that know exactly what they're doing to do this sort of thing and there, there's such a labour of love involved as well like if you just had you know it's cool to have ILM hmm. do something or any of the big effects companies but for a lot of people it might just be another job hmm. but for that one fan that gets to build R2D2 hmm. C3PO Do BB-8 everything yeah and all these creatures it's like that makes their life Mm. you know that is some that's an achievement and something so amazing Mm. it's yeah it's pretty incredible how yeah yeah they just bring everything bring everything together like that and you tend to you don't always think about it until you sort of watch these panels and behind the scenes stuff Mm. and you go oh yeah you know like they tend to get sort of lost it lost it amongst everything else like with trailers coming out and tv promos and stuff you tend to lose focus of all the behind the scenes stuff that does go on but yeah what else could we go from here well, without, without going too much no you're all right how about with your trip to celebration you had five days What's a uh, standout from the convention for you? From the convention, um, the episode one panel was pretty awesome on the last day there. Um, that was great. That was the only sort of big panel I got to go to. Uh, that was the only one I won in the lottery, so I was quite happy to go to that. Was Just, the lottery system good, by the way, or do you uh, think it backfired and needs some work? I think it needs a bit of fine-tuning. Um, I like it in the sense that overnight lines were cut out Mm. but you know there were some people that entered five lotteries and won five whereas you know we entered five lotteries and won one Mm. um so you know i don't know it's it it, obviously that's that's what a lottery is that's absolute definition of lottery you don't always win um but you know there were a lot of people that were sort of felt like they'd been dealt a bit of a blow from it Whereas other people were kind of like, you know, they want everything they ever wanted. And, you know, like I didn't, we entered into all three exclusives. So it was the Funko, the Lego and the Hasbro. We didn't get any of them. I mean, luckily Hasbro opened up the exclusives for sale on the third or fourth day for everyone. So I was managed managed to get them anyway. I just had to line up for probably 20, 30 minutes. Um, which that, wasn't that too was bad. one of the that was the Darth Mo- that was the twentieth anniversary Maul yeah, exactly. and Obi Wan figures. Exactly, which yeah, is stunning. Um, and you know the Funkos they got opened up on the fourth day, I think, to anyone. And they, well, they had gold and blue ones. The blue ones, yeah. yeah. Um, and they just so many of them went on ebay straight away for stupid money scalpers man go the hell home yeah um and the lego one i think i believe lego opened up their exclusive but you know i decided it's you know i'm could go either way with that one it would have been awesome if i had won the lottery i would have just gone and bought it because yeah because i thought it was cool it was a darth vader bust um it looked pretty sweet um but come to the opportunity, I'm like, eh, it's not really my focus of Lego collecting. You know, it's it would be a cool item. Oh, wait, but now I know exactly what you're talking mm, about. It did look pretty cool. Yeah, it did, but it was kind of like, eh, it's not really the focus of what I collect with Lego, so I'm I'm good to pass on it. I want the Tantive Four. Yeah, I don't even build Lego, man. Yeah. Like, I saw that thing, I was like, it's it got a sweet. handle. Yeah, it's so big. It looks sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It was. Pretty, I just overall it was just a good vibe. I got to meet a lot of um, 
a lot of friends that I've met online over the last couple of years uh, since Sweet. Orlando. Um, some podcast heroes that I've I've, I've met I haven't met before. Um, got to meet a couple of guys from the Wampers Lair podcast. Uh, don't listen to them as much as I used to, but it was good to meet them nonetheless. The um, RFR boys. Yeah, met them again. I unfortunately, didn't get to go to any of their shows, but. It, they sold out really quickly as well, but it was good. I managed to find them on the show floor and stopped and had a chat with them and got photos and stuff for about 10 minutes. Um, and then just as I was walking out on the last day, ran into the guys, Jason and Gabe from Blast Points. And I've, I've started uh, listening to their stuff too. I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just hilarious, dorky dudes. That <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, I feel like I get along with them really well had the opportunity to spend more time talking to them i reckon i get along with them really well um but yeah, it was great to finally meet them like i kept my eyes open for them all weekend i spotted them once while i was in a line i didn't want to jump out of the line so yeah. oh, you know i'll spot them at some point and yeah just lucky to on the last day um i did spot them in orlando but i hadn't listened to them heaps by then and i was just too nervous to go up and introduce myself and i thought you idiot. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna, if I spot someone I recognise from online, I'm just going to go and talk to them. And I made an effort to do that this time. But overall, it was just a positive experience all throughout. So your time in LA, you went to the Disney parks. Yeah. Was there anything you could see of Galaxy's Edge? No, we couldn't. All boarded up? Yeah, there's, you could see a couple of spires in the distance, but there was no way that you could could spot it we we managed to get there was a couple of little um pieces of merch in one of the star wars stores um there's a star wars store it's what am what are it called um blanking on what it's called but there was a patch like a galaxy's edge patch which i got there was a couple nice. of t- there was a t-shirt and a cap um i just got the patches because i thought you know i'll get something else when it's actually open so the patches were pretty cool for my jacket so um, yeah, didn't get to see a lot else of Galaxy's Edge. We were talking to one of the Disney cast members while we were eating breakfast one morning, and she was sort of telling us, you know, she's visited the she's visited Galaxy's Edge, and she said it's going to be incredible. Like, she's told I'm us a few little tidbits that. about, you know, how you can get in as soon as you can if you get in if you reserve a hotel, uh, a Disney Disney hotel, you can get a reservation and get in that park sooner oh, rather than later so um because they're doing pre-bookings online <coughs> very soon yeah for uh, a reservation hmm. so it's going to be pretty packed but i think we're just going to hold out until we head back over to anaheim next year i think that could be a risky move as like you got celebration you got all those people and yeah imagine yeah. the whole of celebration just shifting over to mm. galaxy's edge yeah i mean i'm gonna me personally i'm gonna wait a bit um maybe a year or so yeah um wait for the heat to die down and then i'm going to be pushing children out the way grandpas out the way <laughs> women out the way and I'm going to get on that Millennium Falcon and I'm going to cause some havoc not just the men but the women <laughs> and the children too I <laughs> need to ride the Millennium Falcon <laughs> let me on now <laughs> yeah I can't wait man the fact that you can go be in Star Wars yeah. is just the best thing ever mm. So, uh, I don't know, I guess to wrap this up, there's so much more we could talk about. We're gonna we can to, literally talk for hours. I we're going to have to get together again and talk about some of the, you know, the toy reveals and yes, stuff with Hasbro. There's, and there's so much more. We're just going to have to piece together a bit of a plan for another episode very, very shortly. And get yeah, together even if we and, do a Skype call during the week or... Yeah, like get, a, we'll find a way to get together and talk some more, more about celebration because it's just... Yeah, we could talk for hours. Um, We've tried to bring five days down to 40 minutes. Yeah, (laughs) and it's gone nearly two hours anyway. Um, So, uh, you know, and obviously next celebration has been revealed to be Anaheim. What do you you think? You're going to think about it? Yeah, I I really want to go, man. Um, It's all coming down to Mm. building this house and getting a mortgage and being an adult for once mm. um while still buying toys and all the good stuff um so if if we can if my girlfriend and i can save enough money in a separate fund 
mm. to go, then we're all in. Yeah. Um, but we're just going to have to take it day by day and see mm. how we go. Yeah. But if not 2020, I hope 2021, 22, 23, mm. 24, and keep going. Mm. It's 20 years old. They're not going to stop now. Yeah. No, I'm pretty excited to be in Anaheim. Like, it was just one less flight we need to go on next time. Yeah. <laughs> like, 16 hours on a plane is long enough just to get into the United States. So, to take another flight after that's ridiculous. But, so we won't have to next time. Yeah, you get over your jet lag mm. pretty quickly. So, that just pretty much wraps things up, I think, for this episode. Like I said, we could talk for a lot longer. Um, bear, 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 bear. Where are we? Yeah. Where are they? If you want to find Lockie around on, on the interwebs, where can we find you? Uh, on Instagram mainly. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at... Where am I? It's Shorty11989. So Shorty11989. Yep, that's correct. Awesome. Um, you can obviously find me at the Fours with Jesse and everywhere else. I've just started putting together some separate accounts for the podcast. Um, so I'm going to start dropping things through there as well. Um, just to keep that separate from my personal stuff. So I'll keep that up to date as we go along in the future. Um, thank you all for listening, obviously, and do appreciate all the support. And until the next episode, may the force be with you. May the force be with you guys.